the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as you can see, we're not at home anymore. I'm actually at the new home down here in Chicago as I work on my dissertation for my doctorate. And I am at Our Lady of Humility here in Chicago. Of course, the new parish. I live just over there in the rectory right now. And uh, we've had a good first couple of days. It's hard being away from the parishes, but I know the time will go very quickly. And hopefully the project will get completed very quickly as well. But as we gather for this Mass at... On this feast day of the baptism of our Lord, we take a moment to call to mind our sins and to really give thanks to the Lord for the way that he's made us children of God and revealed to us our identity. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you. We adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not quench. Until he establishes justice on the earth, the coastlands will wait for his teaching. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by my hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement, and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Give to the Lord, you sons of God. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Adore the Lord in his holy attire. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the Lord over the vast waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty, 
The voice of the Lord is majestic. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The God of glory thunders. In his temple all say glory. The Lord is enthroned above the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord will bless his people with peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius and said, In truth I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites, as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. What has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism, that John preached, and how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Messiah. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. After all the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, it's good to be with all of you today. You know, in our first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we see how it is prophesied that Jesus will come in a very peaceful way. He's not going to come with great trumpet blasts. He's not going to come with soldiers and armies. Rather, the bruised reed he will not break, the smoldering wick he will not quench. Until he establishes justice on earth, the coastlands will wait for his teaching. And in so many ways, my brothers and sisters, this is very indicative of the way that the Lord comes to us in our own lives. He doesn't come barging in. He doesn't come breaking down locked doors. Rather, he comes to lift up the poor. He comes to... Teach us, not by crying and shouting like so many do these days, but with that still, small, loving voice that reveals to us the immensity of God's great love for us and the great purpose of our lives. And this is where, my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, it's important to recognize the beautiful gift that we have been given in being called sons and daughters of God, brothers and sisters in Christ. That by this baptism that we have received, we have been invited to be so much more than we are alone. To be part of this greater family of God. In our second reading today from St. Peter, in the Acts of the Apostles, we see St. Peter going to visit Cornelius. Now, who is Cornelius? Cornelius was the Roman soldier, the general, if you will, who sent word to Peter that he would like to hear the word of God. And of course, when Peter comes in, he sees that the Holy Spirit is at work in Cornelius' house, that they have great faith. And he says, in truth, I see God shows no partiality. He doesn't choose us as we choose and divide ourselves. Rather, anyone who fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. And this is where, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus comes to us in such peaceful, dignified ways so that we may live uprightly, 
that we may have that true fear of the Lord, which is that awe and reverence, not scared out of our minds of God, not following God because of fear or because we want something from him, but following him out of relationship and out of trust. It's interesting in our gospel reading from the Gospel of Luke, we read of Jesus' baptism and then we hear that John is preaching. But it's interesting that we are missing a number of verses from this gospel. In fact, we are missing verses 17 through 20 of this gospel. And this is where we read, His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor, to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And exhorting them in many other ways, John preached the good news to the people. Now Herod the Tetrarch, who had been censured by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, because all of the evil deeds Herod had committed, added still another to these by putting John into prison. It's interesting we're missing these four verses, no? Yes, Jesus comes in great peace. Yes, there is this wonderful voice from heaven. This is my beloved son. But why is Jesus coming? To separate the wheat from the chaff. And it's very easy for us to think, well, there's wheat people and there's chaff people. But in reality, we have that wheat and chaff within ourselves. And the only way to separate it is through the winnowing fan by breaking open the wheat that the fruit may fall and the chaff may be blown away and then burned. And for us too, we hear that Jesus comes to baptize by fire of the Holy Spirit to burn away that chaff, that useless, needless part of ourselves, that sinful part, the worldly part, so that the seeds of faith may truly be brought forth. I don't know why the church in her wisdom left out these four verses, but yet John's preaching is all the more, more bold because of his imprisonment, because he was unafraid to stand up against Herod and his great sin. And for us too, my brothers and sisters, yes, the Lord comes to us in these peaceful ways that Isaiah talks about. But he doesn't just come to let us to our own devices. No, he loves us so much that he died for us that we may come to know the truth of our own lives, the truth of the conversion that he has in store for us. So as we come to hear the Father's voice in this Mass, let us pray that we will have the courage to step forth in conversion, to step forth in truth and righteous deeds, to step forth recognizing the beautiful way that God has planned out for us in our own lives, to follow him in faith, and my brothers and sisters, to step forth via our own baptisms in great confidence that we are acceptable to God when we live our faith, that he shows no partiality like we do here on earth, that God truly sees us as his sons and daughters and thus is calling us to live for heaven here on earth. I don't know about all of you, but this is a great feast day. A great feast day when we give thanks for the great dignity that we have been given, but we also give thanks that we have a shot, we have a chance, we're able to follow God in our lives, and in doing so, we're able to truly recognize the ways that God comes to purify us, that we may truly be acceptable to him. God bless you. My brothers and sisters, as we come to this Mass, let us profess that faith that we have been baptized into. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was encountered the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. And as we come to this Mass, we offer our prayers and petitions. Pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Pray for our Bishop William and all bishops. And for whole of the Holy Mother Church, that all of us in our baptism may truly see the great love that God has for us and the conversion that he offers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the sick and suffering, all those who have hope those who do not believe in God and those who care for them, that they will know Christ's healing touch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish communities, our own families. We pray that all of us may truly see one another as brothers and sisters in the Lord and truly speak words of truth to one another, that we may all come to know God's great love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, all those who will die this day, we pray in a special way for Debbie Volker, for whom we offer this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Help us to be ever more mindful of the ways that you call us to live our lives according to your good purpose, by your good graces. Help us all to have a great eagerness to hear the voice of the Father in our lives, that we may truly know we are beloved by him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit to the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to the honor, the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed in the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the Spirit's ascending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, through the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind of to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace, O Lord, be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. My brothers and sisters, it's good to be with you for this Mass. Please continue to pray for me as I work on my doctorate over these coming months. But we will also be very much in touch through the YouTube and in so many ways. But anyway, God bless all of you. Hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.